Um, once again, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be joining us from. My name is Karine Vanyan. I'm an intake advisor here at the International Students and Programs Office, also known as ISPO at UC San Diego. ISPO is one of the four units in the Global Initiatives Department, which also includes our International Faculty and Scholars Office, Study Abroad, and the Office of the Assistant Vice Chancellor of Global Initiatives. And today, we're really excited to present and talk to you about graduate students' experience at UC San Diego. As I mentioned, my name is Karine Vanyan, and I'm joined by a few of my colleagues and awesome UCSD students. So I'm going to pass it over to them to introduce themselves as well. Good morning, everybody. My name is Gabby Hoffman. I'm the Assistant Director for Student Experience and Engagement, and I work here at ISPO alongside Karina. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, pass along to my colleague, Shana. Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Shauna Slaviota and I work in graduate education and postdoctoral affairs. So we are the central graduate office on campus. Um, we're very excited to welcome you to UC San Diego. I'm going to go ahead and pass it next to Sai. Thank you, Shauna. Hi everybody, I'm Sai. I'm a second year PhD student in the School of Biological Sciences. I'm also a graduate student intern here at ESPO. Uh, and today I'm also lucky to have my friends join me who are also from my cohort, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, Alexia, if you want to go ahead. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexia. I'm a second year PhD student in uh, biology, and I study ecology. Andrea, if you want to take it away. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Andrea. I'm also a second year PhD student in biology. I'm in a plant bio lab. Um, and I also serve as GPSA's um, basic needs representative um, to our larger basic needs committee. Hey everyone, my name is Jocelyn. I'm also a second year PhD student. I am a, I'm in a structural biology lab over at the Salk Institute with SCI, uh, which is really cool. And I'm really excited to be here and share some resources that are available on campus um, and any questions you may have. Thank you so much for the introductions. Um, before we get started, we just wanted to go over a few housekeeping things. Um, if this is not your first webinar with us, that you may already know that you are in listen-only mode, which means you can hear us, but we can hear you. Um, we really want to make sure that we answer all of your questions today, so please don't hesitate to ask them using the Q&A feature on your screen. If by any chance we haven't had a chance to answer your question, please don't hesitate to connect with an ISPO advisor by going to icontact.ucsd.edu. And lastly, we are recording, so you will be able to view this webinar um, again in the next few days by going to inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. Um, and just to reiterate, this is that Q&A feature on your screen, so please don't hesitate to type in your questions. We'll have time at the end for a live Q&A session, so we'll do our best to answer all of your questions. Um, in terms of the items that we have for today, we're going to do a quick overview of an ISPO website as well as the first step checklist. Um, graduate admissions reminders, uh, we'll talk about graduate programs as well as ISPO programs and resources. Um, we're going to share lots and lots of opportunities for you to join UCSD community and find your community here on campus. Um, we'll touch base on transportation as well as basic needs, and then uh, we'll do a student panel so that you get a chance to hear from all of our panelists a little bit about their experience. And then again, at the end, we'll do a live Q&A session. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Gabi. Thank you, Karina. Um, so for those of you who are not yet familiar with our ISPO website, I just want to do a quick review um, as this is going to be a really helpful first stop for you. Um, if you have recently accepted your admission to UC San Diego and if you're trying to figure out um, those first steps. So we'll go briefly here through our first steps checklist. So the first steps checklist can be um, reached at inewstudent.ucsd.edu. I think Karina put that in the chat as well. Um, when you land on this page, uh, you will see um, it is sorted by population. So as a graduate student, you would click on graduate students. 
and then go through the various different steps that walk you through what you need to do before you come to UCSD. Of course, the first step being requesting those visa documents. I know that's of utmost importance with the timeline of getting a visa. Um, so that will walk you through all of those different steps and things that you need to do. It will next walk you through everything you need to know to prepare for your arrival, um, everything from looking at housing to enrollment um, and so forth. And then um, step three is uh, steps you need to complete when you get to UC San Diego. So we hope that by breaking it up in these, these steps like this, this will be helpful for you to get through all the different pieces you need to uh, when you arrive here at UC San Diego. And uh, similar to how ISPO has outlined a series of steps for new students, graduate education and postdoctoral affairs has as well. So I have a few reminders from our graduate admissions team that I wanted to share with you all. The first reminder is to please log in to your application portal to uh, view any to do items that are listed there. And I will put a link in the chat um, to the portal as well. Um, be sure to specifically look for this statement of legal residence form. This is not required for all programs. So if you do uh, if you do not see it listed, you don't have to take action, but if you do see it listed um, again as to do, then that would be something that you would need to um, take care of before coming to UC San Diego. Um, just a reminder that most students, uh, pretty much all students really, are provisionally admitted at this time. And that means that you still have to submit either final uh, test scores or degree transcripts or other documentation um, to our office in order to finalize your admission. Um, there's, you'll find a list of these documents also in your portal and in the next slide we will see a screenshot of what you see so that will also help you um, look for these items and and let you know where you need to go um, if you have any questions please contact our grad admissions team at gradadmissions at ucsd.edu and they'll be able to help you out uh, oh Awesome, thank you. So again, this is what the portal looks like and looking on the sort of left hand side of the screen, um, the top is where any updates to your status would be listed. Uh, below that is the forms that need to be complete completed and below that is where the pending admissions documents would be posted. So this is uh, what you would see. Please take a look and um, see what steps still need to be completed. I also want to draw your attention to the highlighted section where it says admitted students. So again, similar to ISPO, we have outlined um, various steps that new graduate students need to take care of, and those are all listed on the admitted students section of our website. So um, this has links, and I'm also going to put a link in the chat. Please take a look at these as well. Thank you. All right, I can uh, take it from here. Thanks, everybody. Um, as a graduate student, I really appreciate this part of the webinar because when I was an incoming international graduate student, uh, I think this was a very important webinar for me too. The idea is to introduce everybody to all the resources we have uh, and that you might need during this process and once you arrive on campus and after. So the first thing I would like to begin with is GEPA, which is the Graduate Ed Education and Postdoctoral Affairs. Um, I have my colleague Ashley, who sent uh, a pre-recording uh, talking you through what GPS uh, GEPA entails. So I'll play that for you right now. Okay. I'm Ashley Cassidis, and I'm the Grad Life Intern at GEPA, which is the Division of Graduate Education and Postdoctoral Affairs. Here, Grad Life supports the success of all UCSD graduate and professional students by providing communal, social, academic, and professional resources, promotions, programs, and events 
which all supports uh, graduate and professional students directly. So what that looks like um, is that we, being me and student leaders, campus organizations, faculty and staff, create events for you that tend to your social, professional, and academic needs. So one example of that is our Wednesday workshop. So uh, what that is, it's uh, two to four workshops throughout the quarter that happen on Wednesdays. So one example that we did last quarter for winter of 2023 um, was collab as a grad. And so here is uh, the flyer we had to promote this event. So, uh, you know, last quarter we had collab as a grad um, where we partnered with the Career Center and the graduate peer educators to build your networking toolkits to prepare you for networking in personal academic spaces and relevant to your career prospects. So not only did we build networking toolkits and um, you know learn about each other's interests and their backgrounds, um, but we also uh, not only did we network, um, we actively practice within that space with our peers, so being other graduate students to better understand and prepare for conferences, job talks, and any opportunity that relates to our uh, professional goals. Um, that's what we did for this specific Wednesday workshop. Um, so uh, you could also check out the numerous events that Grad Life and GetBook puts on by visiting our events calendar. So I'll go ahead and walk us through that of where you could find it and how you could access or start to look at those events. So uh, if you go to uh, UCSD Graduate um, Education Postdoctoral Affairs, this is our home page. So what we're gonna do um, is go to under student life, you'll go to events. And if you click right here, Grad Life Events, and click View Calendar, you could already get a sense of what kind of events we're putting on, workshops, opportunities. So uh, we have uh, um, uh, climate interns, uh, graduate climate interns. So it's what that is is that there's graduate students within the community centers that also prepare events specific to that community or we like to do cross-disciplinary and kind of partner up. So uh, we have, you know, um, graduate climate interests that do that. And we also partner up to do events that we see in the graduate community that are, uh, you know, being um, asked for uh, from us or students aren't seeing uh, a certain representation of events. So we make sure we bring it uh, to the forefront and provide those opportunities for all graduate students. So again, here's the calendar of events. Um, you could just get a glimpse of what we do. Uh, there's specific hashtags. So if you're looking for something like a social, this is something for you or community, um, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, this is where you can access and start to view those events um, and see, get a little idea of what we do. Um, so yeah, that's the event calendar from GEPA and Grad Life. Um, additionally, Grad Life sends out a weekly newsletter every quarter with opportunities from employment, fellowships and grants to academic events, uh, writing support and mental health and wellness resources. So that newsletter newsletter goes out every Monday um, with all those, uh, you know, means of support, um, opportunities for you to take. Um, and then lastly, Grad Life plays a role in orientation for incoming UCSD graduate students, which happens in, in September. And we connect and familiarize with uh, UUCSD with, we familiarize uh, these incoming graduate students, so uh, your, such as yourselves, with UCSD campus partners and student orgs. So uh, last year we did have it in person. Uh, it was really nice, it was a nice day. So uh, we had a bunch of tables of the campus partners and student orgs so you could interact um, 
um, in person with them, get some flyers, get some cool merchandise, and just listen to what um, uh, offerings they have and how they can best support you um, here at your time, your time here at ECSD. And uh, lastly, if you have any questions, concerns, or even comments, uh, please feel free to send me an email at gradlife at ucsd.edu and visit our social media pages. So Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter at UCSD Grad Life and UCSD GEPA. Okay, so again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please send me that email at gradlife. Uh, at gradlife at ucsd.edu. Um, my name is Ashley Bassett, and I'm hoping to hear from you. And yeah, I'll send it to the next person. Awesome. Let's now jump into all the exciting resources uh, ISPO has for you. If you could go to the next slide, please. So I'm going to touch upon some uh, important resources that I love as well. So one of them is the English in Action program, where you basically partnered with a native English speaker to help ease your transition and do have a friend really you can communicate with and experience San Diego with them. And we have coffee hours, which is a, a social event. Uh, happens frequently at ISPO and you bond with other graduate students and other international students and the friendly ISPO staff over coffee and bagels and pastries. Um, Triton Trekkers is actually a collaboration between uh, UCSD and Outback Adventures. So the idea is for you to explore San Diego. So that's hiking, kayaking, and pretty much everything else uh, for you to kind of soak in the beauty of the city. And we have International Students and Advisory Council, ISAC, which is a, a meeting with all the graduate students, international ones and undergrads meeting together to advocate for each other and coming up with ideas to how you can make the experience of graduate students better here at UCSD. If you'd go to the next slide, please. Awesome. So this is one of my favorite uh, resources because when I was attending this webinar, I was told to bookmark this uh, events calendar. Has been extremely useful. Uh, I have done that. And I would recommend you do the same. This is basically everything that's happening at the campus at any time. You'd be able to see what's happening and be plugged into um, campus events, really. I think this is a great place for you to uh, meet people who are interested in the same things as you are and form connection. And then we have the GED uh, co-curricular record, which is, it complements your academic transcripts. So most events at ISPO, uh, and you can check them on iEvents calendar, have a get CCR tag, which just means if you attend that event, it can go on a co-curricular record to kind of, as a marker of your holistic, well-rounded um, graduate experience. And you can find more information about that at getccr.ucsd.edu. Grad Pals is actually my pet project. This is something that's very close to my heart because this is something I lead at ISPO. Uh, at Grad Pals, basically every in incoming graduate student who wishes to be paired with a, a mentor who is also a current graduate student, that's, that happens. So this can be based on your interests, hobbies, or even your program, research interests, and pretty much anything else. So you have a support system and you have someone to contact who has been through and been the same, you know, bells and whistles of getting into the program and the initial transition and thereafter. So yeah, I think I see more of this as just promoting friendships. And I think I've had great experience with it so far. Um, it, it really brings me a lot of joy when I see uh, incoming students really uh, transition well into campus and find a, a community. So I would encourage everybody to um, use this QR code and sign up uh, for GradPels and Rest assured, we'll pair you uh, as best as we can with uh, your mentors. 
Oh, I also do want to mention now we have a, uh, a new coffee program where I'll tell you more details after you get to uh, have free coffee on ISPO uh, just to meet with your mentor and more details on that soon. Surf check is basically uh, to borrow from uh, surfer language. It's everything, it's like a checklist for everything you need to be doing between now and before uh, you come to UCSD and soon thereafter. Different things, all the questions uh, that come with travel, housing, what to pack, I don't know, academics, billing, basically everything you would need. It's a, it's a great guide. I would encourage you to um, check this out. Uh, highly resourceful. And I can uh, post a link uh, of that in the chat as well. Okay. Sorry. Awesome. If you could go to the next slide, please. So is, uh, we at UCSD have a lot of uh, other resources as well for you to find uh, your community. Personally, uh, there's so many amazing uh, communities here on campus where I can talk about my experience with the LGBTRC. And it's, it's a great uh, place to find people who are viewing the world and moving through the world through a lens that you happen to be uh, at that time. And then no matter what you want to discuss or create, this is, I think everyone has something they would find uh, community-wise here at UCSD. Uh, my friends later who are on the panel will touch upon a few of those communities as well. But just know that no matter uh, how, how you want to connect, if it's based on your identity, interests, programs, there's always someone. Uh, so please uh, make sure to uh, check these out. If you'd go to the next slide, please. Um, okay, and then there's the GPSA, Graduate Student and Professional Student Association, uh, which is your one-stop shop for all graduate students on campus, covers various aspects of being a grad student from funding, advocacy, events, grants, awards. So yeah, the, the basic mission for them is to advocate uh, for all of us on campus. So it's a, it's a great resource. And as you come on campus, you will uh, meet individuals, students and staff from GPSA. And I think this would be a great resource for everybody as well. And then we have the student organizations. Like I mentioned, we have a lot of student communities on campus. But if you think you would have, you would want to form a club, that's also something you could do. You could form an organization of your own if you don't uh, already find something that resonates with you. So that's a great option as well. I would highly recommend uh, for you to check this out as well. It's student.org.ucsd.edu. Just to give you some numbers, there's 584 organizations and clubs on campus over 20 different categories. So rest assured, there's something for everybody and you would be able to connect and find a community and get that sense of belonging. The next thing, uh, housing. Uh, I know it's it's one of the major um, stress points, at least as was for me uh, before making the transition to San Diego. Uh, so I would recommend if you haven't already do please check out uh, housing and dining uh, uh, has communities website HDH, which is here in the chat. So you, this is this is more than just your student dorm. It, it they uh, there's a lot of community assistants who are also fellow graduate students who work to make uh, the living experience here on campus uh, really fun and engaging. So most initiatives that you do see on campus you do see a reflection of that on grad housing as well. It's a very nice community and for the logistical part of uh, all the housing information, please feel free to check out this website. And then comes to volunteer uh, opportunities. Uh, I doubt you might need this as of now while you're transitioning. But once you're here, uh, I think I would really recommend for you to uh, find ways to get involved uh, and integrated with the UCSD and the San Diego community at large. Uh, I personally uh, volunteered uh, for a, a food distribution program once, and it's very rewarding. And no matter what cause or initiative you support, you can always find something to lend your time uh, and support to and be part of a meaningful change. 
Now the favorite things of mine, uh, which I'm really grateful for, the the UCSC transportation. Uh, no secret that San Diego isn't really known for its public transportation. However, on UCSD campus, uh, there's for people on folks on um, graduate housing, there's a shuttle that runs uh, almost every 15 minutes on weekdays. Uh, so that's something you don't have to worry about. And if you would like a speeder option, there's also uh, something called the spin scooters. And then you would see them everywhere once you are here in San Diego. There's an app, you download it, and you get some free rides also initially when you are a student. So feel uh, make, make sure to uh, avail yourselves of that opportunity. And if you could go to the next slide, please. Uh, while on the subject of transportation, uh, I should mention that uh, by virtue of being a grad student here, uh, you get a UCSD pass, which you can access through the, uh, the Pronto app, which you can download. And you would be able to see um, more information about how to access that here on this link. Basically, the idea is you can take all the public buses here in San Diego for free, and you can also uh, check out the new trolley system, which connects you uh, among many other locations to downtown especially. So I think that really cuts down on time and traffic and it's it's free. So I would really recommend you check it out once you're here. Um, okay, this is something I hope you know you don't have to use, but it's good to know that this resource is available. If you ever uh, find yourselves lost on campus, uh, there's an app uh, that you can find uh, to get to a safer location. I'm putting that here in the chat as well. Um, yeah, another great resource and moving on. Okay, now, so uh, I have my friends who've graciously accepted to uh, join as panelists today and they will be highlighting some causes and initiatives closer to their heart. So uh, I'll have them take it away. Andrea, if you want to take it yeah. away. Yeah, so I'll go over a couple of the basic needs resources that are available to graduate students. Um, the first one is just the Basic Needs Hub Center is a really great resource that you should all take advantage of if you need, if you're experiencing any type of insecurity, there are emergency access resources for medical bills, groceries, personal hygiene, housing, um, and more that can be applied for and are most typically awarded. So if you ever experience any type of insecurity, there are resources on campus at the Basic Needs Hub that are like there for you. Um, so definitely take advantage of them. Um, another great um, resource that is provided um, on campus is the Triton Food Pantry. And so the Triton Food Pantry provides free produce and pantry staples um, to all UCSD students. Uh, undergrad and graduate students. However, there is in graduate housing, a pantry um, located that makes it really easy for graduate students to access. Um, and these pantries are open at least four days a week. Um, and there is a limit to the pantry staples um, that you can take every week, uh, but produce is for the most part unlimited, um, except for the limitations that they have to put on so that they make sure that everyone can have access to the produce. Um, but yeah, so that's like a really great resource if you're ever experiencing um, food insecurity or if you just need help um, getting groceries. And then iTable, which is something that ISPO runs uh, with in a partnership with Basic Needs, also provides emergency food security services, um, but it is more intended for short-term emergency needs. Um, and it's not like something constantly available um, like the Triton Food Pantry. Um, and yeah, so I was putting all of the links to these resources in the chat. They are also linked here um, in the slides as well. I, I, I don't know if you guys are sharing the slides afterwards, but they should be linked. Um, and then the other two um, things that I wanted to highlight is a grocery shuttle. As I mentioned, the public transportation around San Diego isn't the best. Um, it is possible to get to grocery or to grocery stores using public transportation. However, in order to make it more accessible, um, UCSD basic needs and the transportation services collaborated to provide a grocery shuttle that will go to areas that are more culturally diverse and have um, 
grocery stores with like access to foods that are more diverse and less yeah more like interesting than whole foods basically more than what whole foods could offer <laughs> Um, so the, it will currently stop at like H Mart, um, 99 Ranch, and then we just added another stop at La Tiendita Market. Um, so we're having access to a more wide array of um, stores. And there are also going to be more um, affordable grocery stores along that route as well. Um, and then the final program that I wanted to highlight is one that I have started leading. Um, during my time here at UCSD, um, and it is the Graduate Student Community Supported Agriculture Program. So this is a program that cooperates with um, Garden of Eden Organics, um, and we basically provide fresh produce um, from local farms in the San Diego area uh, as for free to graduate students or at a discounted rate depending on the financial need of the student. And um, applications open every quarter and uh, it's a really great program. I strongly recommend um, applying for it if you are interested. Uh, the link, I think, so I may be put in the chat already to our website. Um, but even if you um, don't wanna like apply for the program, if you wanted to get involved in volunteering with us, that's another great way to be a part of the program and also benefit from getting some free produce on the side as a thank you for your volunteering. Um, but yeah, those are pretty much the only resources that I had listed to um, highlight, but uh, there's a lot of other great resources that UCSD provides. So explore the website, check out anything else. Um, I think it's really great to get involved um, in your community and Basic Needs has a lot of volunteer opportunities as well. So if you're interested in that, there should be signups all over their website. Thank you so Thank much, you. Andrea. Jocelyn, do you wanna tell us all about SACNA? Yeah, so SACNA stands for the Society for Advancement of Chicano, Hispanics, and Native Americans in Science. Although we are welcoming to anybody who wants to join SOCNAS, we are just the biggest a national organization that helps underrepresented minorities in science. We help with you know, applications for graduate school, um, for internships, and even positions on campus for research. And so these are just some of the examples of some of the workshops that we've done in the past. Uh, we work very closely to the community in San Diego. So uh, we get to meet a lot of people from the community colleges, some of the universities nearby. And we also do high school workshops where we go, um, get gather some students that want to go and help um, these high school students either with financial aid or letting them know what are the resources at UCSD. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. And so here's an example of one of the outreach com uh, to the community that we do. This was um, this the picture was actually from last year, but we recently did this again in um, last weekend uh, where we go to Barrio Logan, which is one of the communities here in San Diego. We do this um, art and science expo. For us, we were doing the science of tortilla making, uh, and it was just such a great opportunity for not just the community to learn about science and making fun, making science fun and accessible, but also for the students volunteering because we get to also network with all the other organizations that are here. Um, we also get partnerships with people from industry. So that's also really neat to see some of the companies come out and advertise, you know, some of the science that they're doing. And um, I will post, uh, oh, Sai already did. She, he posted on how to become a member. This is just a mailing list if you want to be informed of some of the events that we have, um, or if you want to participate in some of our workshops, some of the ones coming up is resume building to help students uh, find uh, research positions on campus. And we also have funds for travel for the SACNAS that last year was in Puerto Rico, which I believe I got a chance to go to go to and attend. And, and this year is going to be in Portland, Oregon. And I think that was all for me. Awesome, thank you. Alexia, you're up next. Yeah, so um, I want to introduce you to um, 
two, I mean, three uh, very important um, initiatives uh, on campus that I take part almost every day. Um, so the first one is the Rogers Community Garden. I am a, I am the grad student chair of the garden, and basically I we grow food, organic food, uh, to feed students, and we also aim to give it to campus student organizations. Um, so we are one. We are the biggest uh, garden out of the nine gardens we have on campus, and we have there is also a community garden, actually two community gardens at Grad Housing. And we do compost, we grow a lot of food, um, so and we always accept volunteers. So we would love uh, you to come and grow food with us uh, during the week or during the weekend. We have volunteer hours. It's a great way to kind of like, you know, wind off from, uh, wind down from um, your your day in the lab. Or if you are looking for something like uh, to do during the weekend, you can hang out at the garden and if you like uh, nature I think it's a great way to connect um, with like local plants and local uh, wildlife. Um, there is also the Che Cafe which is a very cool collective um, and they have uh, they often have uh, concerts um, and some like art exhibitions but they also do food rescue and we prepare meals on uh, Monday nights and we eat as a community. We have a, a community fridge for people who are facing food insecurity. Uh, it's free for everyone to use. Um, so I strongly encourage you to um, to interact with these, with these uh, communities if you feel the need to and if you want to help uh, food security for all students at UCSD. Um, of course, uh, I need to talk about our uh, union. Um, because at UCSD we have we are like united as uh, as students. That means that uh, we have uh, rights, even as international students. And so I am an active organizer in biology. Um, we are fighting for a better workplace. Um, San Diego is amazing, but uh, and UC San Diego, is, UC San Diego is a very good university. But um, of course, uh, there are always some caveats uh, associated with any any place. So you probably have heard about uh, the recent strike, and the recent strike gained us like some pretty good uh, wage increase, um, some like rights that we finally obtained and kind of enshrined in the contract. I really recommend you to join uh, our union um, when you arrive. Uh, anyway, I will see some of you during the mandatory orientations that we have for graduate student researchers and academic student employees. Um, I think that's you know, it's it's awesome to do mutual aid and um, helping each other uh, on a day to day basis. But for big long term changes, joining the union is going to be very helpful to to basically like in, in um, make our experience as workers at a university better. Um, so with that, I hope that um, you join UCSD and you join our amazing community because in the end, like we're all here trying to support each other and it's it's really fun while doing uh, excellent science. So welcome. Awesome, thank you so much. Now the exciting part, we have a brief panel where I have some questions for the panelists. Uh, the point we're trying to get across here is to hopefully this conversation would bring up some other resources that we may or may not have covered or share some personal experiences here at UCSD, which I think all of us can benefit from. So I guess, yeah, uh, panelists, would someone want to start us off and talk about the most challenging part of adapting to UC San Diego? Feel free to go ahead and speak up. I guess I can go real quickly. Um, I was not living on uh, on campus when I first uh, moved to San Diego. And so for me, it was hard coming from Europe to have to like commute so far <laughs> to go to work. And yeah, I think the distances here in the US are very 
uh, hard to like take in when you're used to like walking distances. But I think you get used to it. And also like, as you were saying, Sai, like if you take the bus, the shuttle, if you get a scooter um, or if you, if, you, if you get a bicycle, then these this, this, uh, distances shrink a lot and it makes it easier. That's awesome. Anyone else have any thoughts or we can move on to the next question? To quickly add to that, so as Sai um, introduced all the transportation available at UC San Diego, definitely take advantage of that. Uh, sometimes it's it's a really big campus and I learned that the hard way when I had classes on opposite ends and it was only a 10 minute um, in between uh, buffer zone. So definitely take advantage of that. And also, as Sai had introduced, there's more than 400 clubs on campus. So sometimes it is difficult to navigate those and finding out which are the best resources for you. Um, so for me, attending one of the uh, library walk uh, events where all the organizations come out uh, was one of the more fun ways to find out about them because you just get to pass by the booths. Um, so finding the right resources can be challenging, but uh, there's definitely a lot, and if you go to the events, it will be worth it. Awesome, yeah, thank I you. you... To... Yeah, thank you. Sorry, go ahead, Andrea. Didn't mean to speak out. No, you're good. You're good. I think just to add on to what Jocelyn's saying, I think um, it was more challenging to like feel involved and like good in the community until I had joined Basic Needs and started actually like having a role within like how UCSD was kind of working. I think being involved in some sort of extracurricular really helped me feel more integrated into the community and more like stable in this area. Sure, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, if we could go to the next slide, please. Anyone, I know we've covered a lot of resources already. Is there anything else you wanted to add panelists or we can, skip ahead because we also have a Q&A session. So um, keeping that in mind, maybe let's skip ahead. Could we go to the next slide, please? So how would you describe your experience as a grad student here? We are in the grad classroom. Jocelyn, did you have any thoughts? Sure. Um... I think I, I, it's been a lot of fun looking at the different research that is being conducted around campus. I think uh, for me, it was sometimes overwhelming seeing so many different disciplines, but um, also very exciting. And I really enjoyed the opportunity to try, at least for me, when I was rotating, I got to try different fields. I come from an immunology background, but uh, because UC San Diego is so diverse, I was able to uh, try different um, types of research and then eventually landed in a biochemistry structural biology lab, which was not what I was expecting or had planned for. But um, I think that's been my great experience of just trying different research opportunities. Anyone else? All right, let's move ahead. Could we go to the next slide, please? Extracurricular activities. Uh, while you're at it, uh, plug for IAM's calendar. I will put the link in the chat. Please remember to check out. There's always something or the other happening. Uh, I can personally talk about um, OSTEM, graduate OSTEM that I'm part of. It's It stands for out in STEM. It's for LGBTQI a individuals, uh, grad students on campus. So it's like an advocacy group. We also have fun events uh, all the time. So like I mentioned to reiterate, I think there's something for everybody all the time. Uh, and once you're here during your orientation, you'll actually get to meet people from different organizations. So yeah, you have you will uh, find your, uh, your community for sure. Um, so it's um, 9 15. So maybe Karina, I'll pass it off to you so we can go to the question and answer session. That sounds good. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think somebody may have wanted to share something about extracurricular curricular activities. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't had a chance to catch up who it was. So feel free to have oh. the chair. Yes, and then we can go ahead to the QA session. Oh, all right, go sorry, ahead. <laughs> Um, I was just going to add that the Black Resource Center also does a lot of really great events. 
um, like they will have like movie nights or like organized trips to like theaters or um, have like little get togethers with free food. Um, so that's also been a really great um, extracurricular activity that I've been involved in. Thank you for sharing, for sharing Andrea. Um, with that, let's go ahead and get to your questions. And then if time permits, we can go back to some of our um, other panelists related questions. Um, I know a common one I've been seeing in the chat is about links. Um, so uh, we'll be more than happy to share all of the links with you. Please email iprograms at ucsd.edu um, and then we can send um, the slides and or the document with the um, links to you. Um, somebody is asking about surfing. So I think um, it's definitely a big part of San Diego community. Um, so is there a course to learn surfing? Anybody familiar with our recreation courses that would like to share? There is a course that you can sign up for um, to learn. But I think it also is hard to get involved into because everyone wants to take the course. So you have to like sign up right when it opens, but there is a course to teach you. A great resource when it comes to um, different courses, um, like recreation related courses is our recreation.ucsd.edu website. Um, so as UC San Diego students, you have access to um, a lot of activities. Um, so one of them I know Sai mentioned is Trident Trekkers, um, in which ISPO partners with Outback Adventures. So you can go on a lot of different trips um, through Outback Adventures. And yeah, as was mentioned, um, you can sign up for classes such as surfing through that as well. Um, we have a question. Um, so we've mentioned in the presentation about 584 organizations and clubs. Um, in your experience, are most of them open to both graduate and undergraduate students? If I can jump on that, yeah, they uh, usually they are open to both. Um, I think that, so in my experience, um, if you're a climber, for instance, or if you want to start, start rock climbing, there is a climbing team at UCSD and uh, the climbing team is open to grad students and undergrad students. Also for like more sustainability, um organization i know that uh there is the students student sustainability sustainability collective ssc um that so it's primarily run by undergrads but they are looking for uh grad students to join too um i feel i feel like usually a lot of organizations are run by undergrads but they really want to bridge the gap between uh, undergrad and grad students so the more like the more grad students actually um, engage with these organizations the better it is uh, for your community and to feel connected as a campus overall thank you Alexia um, there were quite a few questions about grab pals and um, difficulties with the QR code um, Sai if you don't mind could you please post the link in the chat. And also just to mention again, if you're having trouble with any of the links we've shared today, we'd be more than happy to share them with you after this webinar. Um, and to do that, please email iprograms at ucsd.edu. Um, I've also put that email in the chat. Uh, we have a question about popular areas to live near UC San Diego. Um, I know we did a separate housing webinar, um, but would any of the students, based on your experience, would you like to chime in? I can I can try and go. Oh, Jocelyn, do you want to talk about it? I was going to just say, so I'm a San Diego native, and so there are a couple of spots that I know some students were really excited about because not only are they safe, but they are also close to campus, um, some of them being, of course, La Jolla, but that's a, a little bit expensive to live in. So some of the more further ones would include Pacific Beach, uh, North Park that has accessibility to like the trolley. Um, but Alexia, if you have other ones, I know you lived off campus that you'd like to um, add to it. Yeah, I was about to say that. Um, so yeah, basically what you said, like when, if you live like in PB in Pacific Beach or Ocean Beach or North pa North Park, in these places, like you get more of the kind of like active life, I would say. Um, 
um, it's like kind of more exciting to live there because there is more students, I feel like, I don't know, like there is more of a party vibe uh, compared to La Jolla, which like around campus, I will say it's like kind of calm. Like, I don't know, there it's not really like North, North Park is really exciting because like it's kind of walkable distance. Like you can go to um, to bars and like you can kind of have like exciting like nightlife. But La, La Jolla, I don't think is uh very comparable uh, I lived so not right now I live at grad housing and it's great because for me like I don't really interact with like nightlife uh, but it's very convenient to be like super close to campus like 10 minutes by bicycle um, and before I used to live close to the UTC area so basically like behind grad housing there is a big mall and I used to live around there uh, it's very nice but honestly I think it's very expensive now so I don't I don't like you you probably have to share a room uh to live there because it's really really expensive um because the the right the, the rents just went uh, just went up uh, lately um so yeah the thing is I feel like to find an affordable place now you would have to to live in like PB um maybe around uh UCSD uh there are a lot of condominiums that are pretty afford affordable Thank you both so much for sharing. Um, we have a question in regards to shuttle services. Um, so I don't know, Sai or anybody else on the call, if you'd like to re just reiterate, mention again, um, some of the names of the different shuttle services that we have available to our students. So could you say that again, what services? Shuttle services, so how, how to get Oh, them. shuttle, okay. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, so there is one shuttle from UCSD grad housing to the main campus. So this would uh, take you to the library walk area. Uh, I think that's something that connects you to the campus. I think it's in the heart of the campus. That's great. There's also a grocery shuttle, like and Andrea was mentioning. You can find all that info um, at Triton Transport, which I'll uh, put the link shortly. Um, and there's also like a Scripps uh, Institute of Oceanography shuttle. Um, and yeah, there's some uh, shuttles, especially for the weekend. So you can check that out for sure. This is campus and campus adjacent stuff. Alexia, I agree. Uh, that's, I agree with Alexia. Uh, everything is free. Uh, when you have your app, it's going to be very handy. Plus you also have access to all the city buses and the, the trolley, uh, which is great. Thank you, Sai. Um, there's a question. Um, about badminton courts and community in the university. So some of our more um, athletic related clubs. So would anybody like to take that question? I would mention that there uh, those facilities exist. I would highly recommend everyone check out uh, recreation at UCSD's website, uh, whose link is here. Uh, you would find everything related to physical and mental health uh, and all the different activities you would want to uh, get involved in in that website. And as part of which you can also uh, sign up for badminton courts. Uh, you will see all the information there and so much more. So I highly recommend you check it out. And as students, we have access to these classes for free. I've personally taken their uh, yoga classes, spin classes. I know uh, other panelists have as well. And I think you'll find something no matter what uh, your interests are, for sure. Looks like we have quite a lot of questions about housing. So for the purpose of this webinar, we'll not be answering any of the housing questions. I highly encourage you to reach out to Housing, Dining and Hospitality. Um, as well as check out our pre-arrival webinar on graduate housing that we did a few weeks ago. Um, and you can find all of those resources by going to inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. Um, um, there's also a big interest about food items and just local um, places to get food, um, such as, you know, grocery stores and then restaurants. Um, so any recommendations, any particular places that you would encourage students to check out while like UC San Diego or in San Diego in general? Um, as far as uh, affordable food um, in, around the area, I'd say your best bets are probably Ralph's and Trader Joe's, which are um, 
accessible via uh, bus and also the trolley. And they're actually like pretty accessible. Um, it's like maybe a 15 minute or 10 minute um, ride from campus. Um, and then also the food pantry, I think is most definitely going to be the most affordable because it's free. Um, but they are pretty well stocked and they have like a lot of really great um, services there as well. If I may add, um, I know Andrea introduced uh, some of the grocery stores that the shuttle could take you to, like La Tiendita. So being in Southern California, we have a large Latin community. So I would encourage you to check out some of the stores that cater to Latin food, um, try out some new recipes, have fun with it. Uh, usually the prices are really affordable as well. Um, and so if you, you know, just look up how to make some enchiladas or a burrito, it'd be a lot of fun to, you know, go to one of the grocery stores and get some affordable ingredients for that. Thank you for sharing. Um, in our um, surf check, um, something that you can also find if you're interested in sort of looking into popular neighborhoods to eat or, um, you know, want to learn more about ISPO favorite spots, um, you can check it out um, inside if you don't mind putting in um, our surf check guide just one more time. There's a separate section just about food and places in San Diego. Um, and then we also got a question about getting on campus um, from the airport. And so actually, if you do go to surf check coming to UC San Diego guide, uh, we have a separate section on um, transportation to UC San Diego. And we talk about um, different options such as buses, Amtrak, um, and much more. And so um, it's a great kind of one stop for, for all of the information about transportation and how to get to campus. Um, there's also a question about past recordings to our webinars, which is an excellent question. So if you would like to access any of our recordings, there should be available now on inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. Um, and I'm posting that link in the chat as well. Um, we have a few more webinars coming up next week and, and weeks after. So um, still a great um great resource to utilize and register for those. Um, we'll do our best to post the recording to this webinar in the next few days, but um, it may take us some time before it's ready. With that, it looks like we have just a minute left. So if we haven't had a chance to answer your questions, we're really sorry about that. And we would love to still connect. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, you are more than welcome to get access to the links that we've mentioned. Um, so please email iprograms at ucsd.edu for those. And um, as always, if you'd like to connect with ISPO, please don't hesitate to reach out to inustudent at ucsd.edu. Um, and also um, to connect with GEPA, please email gradadmissions at ucsd.edu. We're super excited to welcome you all this upcoming fall. Um, and thank you so much to our panelists for joining us today, um, as well as all of you who've joined us um, to watch this presentation. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for coming.